former vice chief of um, AFN. Her father is a long time vice regional chief. Bill Wilson, uh, he's, he was a controversial vice chief. He sometimes said things people didn't like. <laughs> um, but he threatened his father. I, I, I saw it on uh, Facebook. He said to Trudeau, I have two daughters. Trudeau says, yeah. And he says, they both want to be prime minister. They also both want to be lawyers. And uh, he says, yeah. And he says, they're both girls. <laughs> Everybody started laughing on this side. And he says, well, I think I'll just stay here till they're ready. <laughs> He's going to stay prime minister. But anyway, um, his two daughters are tremendously uh, politically active. And he was vice regional chief, I think, for at least 30 years. Um, constant. It was pretty constant. And I think he held AFN to a, a, a higher standard than than uh, currently exists. I'm not saying that's Jody's fault, but I don't think she's as tough as her father was. Uh, I think she's a good lawyer. I'm not sure that uh, that she's going to be good for the sovereignty movement because I don't think that's the justice issue that gets pri is going to get her priority. She's going to have to deal with the murdered and missing women, Native Child and Family Services lawsuit, the uh, inquiry into Manitoba justice and the RCMP and the ju judicial system um, and Aboriginal people. Uh, what's the other inquiry? The Starlight Trail inquiry into murdering men, because it's not just women that are being murdered, men are being murdered as well. All of those things are part of the justice uh, work that she has to do. They're all huge. Two of the inquiries have already occurred, but no recommendations were implemented. So on the one hand, she has implementation work to look at, and on the other hand, she has justice work that's very pressing to, work at, to look at. They also ha have another justice issue, that is they created a lot of um, indigenous peacekeepers and didn't put them to work. So we have the capacity to take care of those women in the north through the peacekeepers. They've got the peacekeepers. They're all trained to be peacekeepers, but they never hired them. And that's the, uh, the inquiry issue that we're hoping an in a justice inquiry will come forward the, with the recommendation of getting some peacekeepers to prevent the violence and protect women. They're not being protected by anybody. And so they're being victimized by all kinds of violent individuals from all walks of life and all races and whatnot. And they're uh, not just vulnerable, they're sitting ducks, you know, just uh, no protection whatsoever. We, we can call the police down here. If you're in Prince George, you can call the police. But if you're between Prince Rupert and Prince George, it will take them five hours to get there. You're dead by then, which is what's been happening. So protection through the peacekeepers is what uh, a lot of women are hoping for, for the northerners that are isolated in communities and can't access uh, or won't access RCMP because of the sexual abuse issues between uh, Canadian police and Aboriginal women. Hopefully the peacekeepers will solve that, but there's got to be funding for it. There's lots of funding for policing non-Native people. There should be funding for policing and protecting Aboriginal women, but again there isn't. So. An inquiry will, may solve that problem, who knows, or at least um, pose a solution to that problem. So going forward, do you think this is uh, optimistic uh, for Indigenous people now? Or? No, uh, I don't. I mean, a lot of people do. I, I don't have any faith in any government. The thing that we have now is that we're voters, though. And so when we lobby, people are going to have to listen because we swung the vote. We're not just voters, we're, we're, we're swing voters. That is, 
You could be out of government next time and somebody else can be in, depending on our mood. Yeah? We planned how to vote, we executed how to organize the vote, and we did it, and we were successful. It was a nationwide campaign. Four women really started it, or three women actually. Three women actually started it, and then 150 of us joined that I know of, probably more. There's probably about four or 500 women that participated in getting uh, indigenous people out to vote. But we figured out the ridings where uh, we have the swing vote. And, and uh, that made all the difference, and largely in the north. Some communities, 100%. Could you actually describe, I know we had this conversation a little bit before, but you're saying that there was a little uh, anomalies and problems with voting? In yes, the there was. There was quite a few anomalies. One was not enough ballots. One community of 2,800 voters had only 400 ballots. That's one-seventh of the ballots required. Now, they have to have the correct number. And it's the election commissioners, I, I can't remember what they're called now, God, I'm not a very good voter. But anyway, I'm going to look this up because I've had to talk about this. <laughs> but they, people were saying, well, what do we do? You know, nobody knew what to do because nobody had really voted before. Well, it's the election commissioner, isn't it? And so they started phoning people to find out what to do. And someone said, Xerox them and they'll accept it. So that community Xeroxed them and got, they got accepted. Other communities flew in new ballots. You know, it was a two and a half hour flight or an hour flight or a half hour flight or whatever it is. Some drove them in, but a lot of Northern communities off the beaten path were without enough ballots. That's not right. That's illegal. You can't do that. And of course, there's gonna be some investigating into that who made those decisions not to have enough ballots? There's always supposed to be the right number of ballots for the numbers of voters. Even if the number of voters don't show up, there's still supposed to be enough ballots. But I guess years and years of not having, you know, more than 10% of the people vote, they thought they had more than enough. And the whole community though, the, you know, every one of these ridings, the community stayed. Now normally, if there wasn't enough ballots, people would just go home and they didn't complain. But this time they stayed and they complained. They didn't even know who to complain to initially, but they complained, they eventually found the right person and they got their ballots and they got their voting done. But there needs to be an investigation in that. I'm not sure if that's justice minister work. It could be Jody's, uh, uh, portfolio. So she's going to be a busy girl because a lot of our issues are justice issues.